Thank you for coming to the world's, world's freest country. We'll introduce Liberland for you. Thank you, thank you for coming. And let's just get right into it. So why Liberland? Why do you want to have a Liberland? Uh, this is the Tower of Babel, and it's a misleading image. And it, it's not supposed to be, but the Tower of Babel suggests unif unification or, or, or one powerful block or something like that. That's not the world we live in. And you see those planes, they're supposed to be war planes. Like this is supposed to be a chaotic Tower of Babel. And that's kind of an image of the world we live in, that everybody does their thing, all the states, but it works somehow together and it doesn't work for the benefit of the individual. At least not, at least it's not a program, or but well, there is no program and that's a problem. <laughs> it's, it's a non-coordinated mess which squashes innovation, taxes go up, we have inflation, um, chaos on the media landscape, and there is international bickering, you know about that Ukraine-Russia war now. So the individual suffers. Some people call that Moloch. It's like a te technical term from like game theory where you have uh, incentives which at the end of the day work for the worst outcome, at least for the most participants of the system. And Liberland tries to be an answer so what's Liberland? I've already talked about it. It's a country uh, founded in 2015 by Mr. Vít Jedlička, who is a Czech citizen. And uh, it was founded here between Serbia and Croatia on a land that was uh, made a no man's land due to an international dispute. So he just came there, put the flag there in the name of Liberland, which is legal, legal according to, public, to international law, according to the doctrine of international law, the, the, the judiciary, the jurisprudence and everything. And this way, the first network state, if you know what that is, in history came to be. The underpinnings are very clear, minimal state, night watchman state. By the way, this gentleman is Dr. Robert Nozick, who was a theorist of this uh, night watchman state, one of many, but he is uh, one of our philosophical underpinnings. So what does this night watchman state do? What does it want to do? Protect your rights, namely property rights, because all the other rights are derived from property rights. So if you can own yourself, and you own the products of your actions, and own stuff which you take from nature or which you buy from somebody else, then you're free. That's the definition of freedom of classical liberalism. Think Thomas Jefferson or uh, early USA or something like that. And we believe that this is one of the uh, core points in modernity, but we have forgotten it. And Liberland tries to bring it back into real life. So we have a constitution, which is a constitution based on property rights, self-ownership. We uh, want to have this basic principle. As long as you own it, you own it. So that means we will protect it for you as a Liberland government. You can, of course, have private pro uh, protection agencies that could happen there. We're not a monopolistic government, unlike all the others. But we protect that property which its owners want protected, but can't protect, or at least don't protect at this point by their own means, right? And would like to, and there is a, there is a problem. Somebody is attacking it, or there is a fire. Think of that. Also, would mean protection from natural, natural causes, right? But it's a very minimal protection. It's going to be a very minimal government. So, how does it work, and how does it keep minimal? Like all the lots of governments have said in the past that they want to keep themselves minimal. Think Margaret Thatcher. Think every Republican government in America. Uh, here, it's like not such a big buzzword. Well, we want to do one important thing which will make it reality and which is called a sort of a magic bullet that makes it impossible for the government to bloat. And that is that taxes are voluntary. Doesn't mean you don't pay anything, but you decide how much you pay. And it can be zero. Now, there are repercussions for that because you can be asked by other people, how much are you paying in taxes? Why could that be? because they want to deal with you and you want to deal with them. You want to have a business with them and they want to know if you're solvent. And so you can show them on the blockchain, verify that you have paid this and this much in tax, in voluntary taxes in Liberland, 
and therefore you are a good person to deal with. You're going to pay up whatever you are due. Also, so we see that uh, other methods of enforcement, and this is not enforcement but more persuasion, right, work to gather taxes. And that the governments of this current world are using force, but they don't have to, in fact. And there are schemes like this, and I mean it's schemes in a good way, all across the world. Think about in the US, you have housing uh, associations where you live, and you have to pay there. And if you don't, you're a pariah. And people pay quite a lot. But no, there will be n no sheriff will come for them, you know, with a gun, unlike here. And so this principle can work for uh, countries. And the, the wanted by side effect of that is that you don't have an ever bloating government because it will just there's nothing to feed on if you if you if you don't feed the beast the beast won't grow so here we have a privacy conference this is about monero this is about keeping your data private and freedom and privacy are not always best friends and we want to create a free country in the world but we also need to make sure that we are not the country which is which is the least private or which would destroy your your freedom your uh, your privacy which would endanger it which would be a haven for those who want to take your data. So these are just some of the problems which we are po uh, pointing out. So freedom requires a sort of ability to make informed choice. And how are you going to do that if there are people deceiving you into taking your data, right? That's a problem. In Europe, you have GDPR and you have other regulations which overclutter the, your life and makes, makes it expensive to do business, but they are there to protect your data. In Liberland, you won't have that. In Liberland, the government, which is small by design, will not be able to enforce such regulations because there's simply not enough money to give to some information cops who monitor the internet or whatever, and the constitution prohibits it. So how are we doing that? What's Liberland's answer? We will now examine the primary answer, and that is the government on the blockchain, which sounds like a non-sequitur, but it isn't really. Liberland is building and currently has built a blockchain. And there is the DAP on it, the primary DAP, the first DAP is the government, the legislature app. So we're running a blockchain, which is, uh, which is uh, the, 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 the primary platform for the government. We call it DAG, Decentralized Autonomous Government. It's like DAO, but for governments. So we have lawmaking and democracy, and then executive, not execution, executive on the blockchain. Also have algorithmic transfer of power, which is important because democracy's main point is to transfer power and we want to make it code is law, you know, fixed thing. First element is citizenship. Citizenship uh, is achieved by investment, one might say, or but better to say by payment of voluntary taxes. If you pay enough voluntary taxes, you can become a citizen. Currently, it would be $5,000. Why? Because we want citizens to have some kind of a connection to the country, right? You just don't, hey, I want to be a citizen. No, we want you to prove that you have a commitment to the country. And in this, we are similar to all the other countries, except that we are much more lenient because they probably will want you to invest really a lot of money or like a thousand times, a hundred times more at least, or you need to stay there for some time, like to, 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 to invest your time. We have uh, had issues with staying there until now, so we instead choose for this, uh, this uh, system. We um, pool the tokens which which we invest into the country, we vest them, we keep them on, on an account where they cannot just leave. This way we prevent plutocracy from taking place in Liberland. And uh, you can invest them, unlike in all the other countries where taxes just are no longer your money and it's taken from you, here it is kind of your money, it's still your money, it's still your account, but you can only invest 10% per year. And if you do that, you lose political rights of voting, you can still if you're like a representative, you can still remain one. If you're a minister, you can remain one, but you cannot use your tokens to vote. Apropos, you vote with tokens, like in a DAO, but it's a government. That's 
unique because you can buy more tokens if you're interested in in uh, politics and you want to you, you want to have a better voice or, or like louder voice in liberal land, but you still have to vest them, pull them. So it's not a plutocracy, yeah? because a plutocracy would be that you just buy, vote, and get it back. That's that, that that would be like the rule of the rich. But here it's rule of the committed, one might say, and that's good, we think. Legislative works this way. The main uh, instrument is the referendum. Already built, you can go to the Liberal blockchain and experience it. We have the test net and the main net. Um, how it works, very simple. Every, you can propose a law and something called a Congress can propose a law. If you propose a law, there is a, an anti-populism measure that the fewer voters there are, the uh, higher the threshold for acceptance. That is to say that you don't, you, uh, we won't pass a law based on like a small uh, voter turnover. We don't want that. From the Congress, that's not the case because Congress is voted by the citizens. That's like the Parliament of Liberland. But we have a Parliament, but all the laws have to pass through you, like if you're citizens. So through the people. So the people vote, not the representatives, for on the law. And the Congress is a privileged proposer of law, as we said, so the, the anti-populism measure doesn't apply. And also, you can delegate to congressmen, which is super useful. Maybe you don't know everything about every issue. Maybe you don't have the time to learn about it, but they do. They're paid for it. They're trusted for it by you. So you just give your voting right to them, ad hoc maybe, or for some time. And if they do something weird with it, you take it back. Simple. So. Um, currently, the blockchain is like Bitcoin, so it's pseudonymous. That's not ideal for voting, so we are going to implement a secret ballot. Now it's a secret ballot by choice. So if you want to reveal yourself on the chain, you can. Citizenship is connected to your address, but that's in a secure database. That's not on the blockchain. So it's not forever, you don't have like a digital forever on a blockchain identity connected to your address. That wouldn't go. That would be totally, totally the opposite of privacy. So what we have now is that you are on the chain, you are a string of characters, which however has its history and that history is public, including voting history. And there would be of course ways how to match you with, uh, with the string of characters, which is the same in Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin, uh, everywhere, except for Monero and Zcash and those privacy ones. So we want to create subsystems of privacy. We cannot have a general system of privacy because we are a country and if we had that, we would be in textbook tax haven and nobody would talk to, talk to us. So we will instead have subsystems where this is palatable to, for the international community and most notable the vote, for the voting, it's not just palatable, it's required. Great, let's have it. So we will have a zero knowledge, probably zero knowledge based a proof-based um, subsystem for voting where you will have a derived address, which is like secret, which you can even generate like every time you go voting and then you vote and it's a secret ballot. We will build that soon. It's not yet there. Now it's a pseudonymous voting. Yeah. So, so um, let's go on. We also have the executive. How does it work? Uh, it's responsible to the Congress. Remember the Congress, the Parliament, that's, uh, that is what makes the executive. Executives are the guys who uh, rule liberal and day to day. Um, we want them to be stable. So we want, they have five years. It's actually counted in election terms. Election terms is three, three months, every three months. That's election for the Congress, of course. So they have five years uh, terms and there are four ministers, not more. We have a small government, so a small country. We don't need more. And we have a prime minister, or we will have a prime minister. Prime minister and ministers are select, elected by the Congress and they can be dismissed by the Congress. They can also be dismissed by the people. And that is done in a special way. Now, I remember the word plutocracy, uh, that is not desired. And so we have an anti-plutocracy measure that there is a repealing vote, which is head counted. So if you repeal a law, or in this case, dismiss uh, an official, that's done head counted. So it doesn't matter how many merits, how many tokens you have in the DAG, you're just one citizen. And that's to say that even the poorest citizen will have, a, will have a voice, right? In order to get rid of a law, get rid of a provision, or a judge, or something like that. Here, these guys, the, the executive will mostly be dismissed by the Congress. So that's your representatives, whom you directly vote by tokens, they can, they can dismiss the ministers. 
And any agencies which the ministers want to create would also have to be created by law. And this way we make sure that there is no, that, and it's all on the blockchain, like all recorded. So you know what the agencies are, you know what their powers are. This already built, we call that the offices palette. I can tell you in detail after this. this I have to be very brief here. I don't have that much time. But I'll tell you after that if you're interested, how that works. Well, and here we are. Uh, try going to answer the, the question which we posted in the middle, like uh, privacy versus uh, freedom. So the dramatic consequences are that you, we cannot really regulate much what the other governments regulate. So take, for example, anti-money laundering. Those are provisions which, which uh, implement the FATF uh, financial ta fiscal tax ta task force uh, recommendations. And the European Union has written many, many pages of text on that and enforces it in many ways. Now, we can't do that. We can't, we can't protect you from Google taking your data and so on. So what can be done? What, what, what has to be done? What has to be done is that the people themselves will, will create on their own initiative, on the free market, those solutions. So in order for the, for the country to be properly working, the government's not enough. And that's by design. We're not, we're not makers of institutions, but we're enablers. And the people have to be the makers. Or it will just not be done. But that's how you get the freest country. So we're not guaranteeing it for you. We're just leaving you the place to do it yourself. And the most favorable conditions in the world on the market. And so those institutions for banking, for anti-money laundering, for protection, for privacy, will have to be private, will have to be optional. There is no tax money to take, in, take from anyways. The government can even create such institutions, but they will always be voluntary. That's what we, that's what we want, and that's how we want to protect your freedom and your privacy. So uh, there are central attempts already created by us because we know that white, the blank word page is not a, good, not a good beginning. It's not easy to start from scratch uh, without an inspiration. So we want to uh, create a central institution such as the judiciary. We are building now, this is a big thing now, judiciary on the blockchain. There is a possibility of private courts and we are creating this judiciary, just like everything, totally open source, MIT license. So others will be able to take it and have their private courts and that's what we want actually. But we will have also a state court for those who don't have a private court, who, who, who have no, no agreement with a private court that they, that they will be protected by it, their rights will be protected by it. And uh, we want this to connect the blockchain with the traditional contract world. So the world of, re of, of law as we live it, which is on paper. And the operation system, the operating system is your own mind. Well, the judiciary, that those are humans who will read the code and interpret it and turn it into smart, in executable short pieces of smart contract. And also there will be smart contract and we hope that people will start businesses which will turn like dumb contract or traditional contracts into smart contracts. And we're building a platform called the marketplace of judges or marketplace of law, which will, which will enable that. Yeah? So we enable the institutions we are an incub incubator of institutions, but we are not really institutions created. We only create the basic ones and hope and open the field that you build your own ones. So it, it is freedom, but there is also a duty, a duty to be a doer and a maker, right? A duty to defend your own rights, a duty to be responsible, and also in a way a duty to uh, do business and help help others and help yourself you know and if you don't fulfill this duty there is no policeman to stop you there is no gun but you will just live in a less rich environment in a less uh, well well with a, with a less well protected privacy for example or 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 such yeah so the institutions they're up to you and how are we going to do that? This is Thomas Jefferson, by the way. We were founded on his uh, birthday and we are inspired in this by him because he had the same ideas about America. And America became the most prosperous country in the world based on, largely based on those ideas. So we have lack of taxes. We have tokenized democracy. So there is real democracy, uh, the real representation also with the delegation. So you are really in control. It's not just that uh, it's a, like one, one, one time in five years and then you have to look what those people you trusted are doing and you have nothing to do with them for the entire five years. No, we give you 
uh, rights and powers to stop them. We have the stable executive, lean, fast, because it's, it's continuously starved of money in a way, because it can't just take yours. So it has to really show that it's working for you so that you give it the money voluntarily. And the judiciary to resolve any conflict which, the, which happens between the makers and the doers and anybody else, of course, so that they can continue doing. And we really want to make that rapid and, and uh, user friendly. Okay, so this is the basis of Liberland. Again, I had to be very fast. So if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer, answer them. Thank you very much.